Hello boys and girls. This is Mrs. Michaels. I know you don't know me that well, but very soon you will because we're gonna spend every day together. But this week we're not gonna spend very much time together and I wanted to make sure that we had some things that we wanted, that I, want, that I had some things that I wanted to talk about that will help us for when we're together all next week. One thing that's very important for us to remember is things that, something that we call our classroom expectations. And it's kind of like maybe if you had some rules in your house that um, your mommies and daddies had, like, you know, after you were done playing with your toys, you had to put them in a basket and put them away. Uh, maybe that when the door is closed outside, you don't open the door unless your family or your parents are with you. Those are rules to help keep us safe. And that's what we have at school. We have rules to help keep us safe while we're here in the school. And that's where I am right now. And this is something that we're gonna look at together when you come to school next week, or even if you come a day this week. Um, so these are expectations, things that we do to keep make sure that we're safe. The very first top, top rule or expectation has to do with these. You know what those are? Mr. Potato Head has eyes my eyes are behind my glasses his eyes are right up here at the top of his head these eyes tell us that one thing that we do to be safe at school is we and to learn at school is we use our looking eyes that means when the teacher is talking or somebody is trying to tell you a story about something that they um, that happened to them you turn with your eyes and you look don't you, you look at the person that's speaking the person that's talking to you. You don't have to look right in their eyes, but maybe you just turn your body and you look toward them. That's using your looking eyes. If you're looking down, you probably aren't doing what the next expectation is, which is using listening ears. These are ears. You, each of you have ears and ears are used for hearing. And you use your listening ears when somebody is maybe talking to you or when a teacher or your mom and dad are trying to get you to do something like come with me come to here come brush your teeth time to go to bed you use your ears so you know that you're being talked to and that means that you should be listening to that the next thing that we do is a really important this one really helps us to talk about safety these last two two expectations or rules are for keeping ourselves and the people around us safe. And this one says that these hands, this one has arms also, but hands are gentle. It says we use gentle hands. And we use those hands when we're in the school, outside, inside. You probably also use them at home. Gentle hands are so that you don't hurt somebody or break something, right? So when you're at school, we're gonna have lots of toys to play with and we're gonna have lots of fun things to do, but we're gonna play with those toys using our hands gently. So maybe you are building with blocks and then you're all done. You say, I'm all done. And you pick up a block and you throw it. Is that using gentle hands? No, because that rock that throws might hit somebody in the head and it could hurt them. All it means is you're gonna gently pick up toys and put them away or put them on the shelf, that kind of thing. What about if you're sitting next to a friend and that friend is real close to you and maybe you don't wanna sit that close? Do you hit your friend? No, no, you don't. You use your hands gently. Maybe you need to get your friend's attention and maybe tap them on the shoulder and let them know that you'd like them to slide over or to move over, or you get a teacher to help you. We have three teachers in our classroom at least. Somebody will be there to help you. So we always think about our hands and that we keep our hands gentle. Another one thing that you might hear is keep your hands to yourself. That's something, that means your hands are on your own body, not on other children's or people's bodies. And then the last thing for safety and is one of our rules here at school is these are feet, right? These are potato, Mr. Potato Head feet. Can you see them? And these feet inside the classroom, when you have a ceiling over your head, we're walking with our feet. They're walking feet. And we will say, use your walking feet. You know, another place that we would use our walking feet 
that's not in our classroom is we're gonna have a chance to go outside and to walk out to our cars at the end of the day or to walk from your car into the classroom at the beginning of the day. That's called using walking feet or walking to. That means that when you're in the hallway, you don't run. You know, we run outside. Running is a fun thing to do in the playground. If we have the ceiling over our head, that's when we're using our walking feet. Sometimes we get excited and we forget about that, but that's okay. We will just remind, help remind you to use your walking feet when you're inside the building. All right, so these are some of our very important rules. We'll talk about those every day. You'll definitely learn them and you won't forget them because we'll remind you. All right, something else that I wanna talk about, I'm gonna say goodbye to our ex expectations and rules is this story which is called a whole body listener so do you have a body yes i have a body you have a body we all do and our bodies are something that we control so that we can listen and learn all right and the more we can control our body the more friends we'll have the more we will learn at school and the safer we will be there's just a few things that are helpful for that so this story talks about this boy and things that he um, knows to do in order to learn, be safe, and keep, and keep friends. All right, it's called a whole body listener. See, he's sitting there. We call that crisscross legs. Sometimes we will ask you to sit crisscross legs and we'll practice that skill at school. First page says, a whole body listener has shoulders that are facing the speaker. So right now I'm the one speaking. So if this person was in our class, he would turn his shoulders, one here, one here, toward me. See, look, his shoulders are facing me because I'm the one speaking. If you're the one speaking, then we will turn his shoulders facing you. If we say shoulders, that means that your body is turned like that. And that helps you be able to look at the person, which we know that's one of our important things using looking eyes, right? So shoulders facing the speaker, right? Next thing about a whole body listener is his hands that are still. Still. So still is another way of describing keeping your hands to yourself. It's not moving your hands all over or touching. If you're touching somebody next to you, then your hands aren't still, are they? They're moving. If you're reaching over and picking up a toy while we're um, supposed to be listening or that kind of thing, your hands aren't still, are you? They're moving, all right? So we like having still hands and that will help us not get distracted, but listen to the speaker. That's another good thing about using your whole body. Here, look, eyes. We had hands on our expectations. We have eyes. A whole body listener has eyes that are looking at the speaker. There we go again. Eyes looking up at the speaker. The teacher usually is in, in school or at home. It might be your mom or your dad, your grandma or your grandpa. Eyes looking at the speaker. A whole body listener has a brain. Look at that funny brain. Do you know where our brains are? Our brains are in our head. And this says that is thinking about the speaker. Brain that is thinking about the speaker and what the speaker is saying. So the brain is what's inside our heads that tells us what to think. Sometimes it even tells us what to feel. And we'll talk a lot more about feelings as the year goes on. But this is something that you'll think your brain, if you're looking at the speaker, your brain is saying, listening to, is thinking about what that speaker is talking about. All right, there's the brain. What's next? Oh, I knew we were gonna have to talk about feet because we always talk about feet at school. A whole body listener has feet that are calm. We talk a lot about calm. It's a feeling also but it's also a way of looking at your feet look his feet they're not moving around they're calm that means they're sitting still okay they're not moving around if you're kicking your feet or you're um, moving your feet from side to side it makes it more difficult to be a listener 
And we want you to be listening at school, don't we? Because that's how you learn. Okay, what else? Oh, we almost, I thought we were gonna forget about these ears. It says a whole body listener has ears that are hearing the speaker. That goes along with what we were saying a minute ago. Using your listening ears. If your ears are listening, they're listening, then you will hear what the speaker or the teacher has to say, or your mommy or your daddy. What about this one? That's right, we didn't really talk about a mouth when we were talking about expectations or our rules, but here it says a whole body listener has a mouth that is quiet. See that quiet? He's smiling. You can smile and be quiet. Quiet means you're not making a lot of noise, doesn't it? Sometimes you might have been told to be quiet at, at maybe at church is a quiet place. Maybe when you're going in a store with your family, maybe it's like, okay, shh, quiet. You know where a big quiet place is? A library. If you've ever been at a library, when you walk in the library where all those books are on the shelf, it's very quiet, isn't it? And that doesn't mean you can't talk a little bit. We love having you talk, but it just means when we're supposed to be sitting at the circle time and listening and learning, we try to have our quiet mouths. Last page, almost done, says, when I listen with my whole body, I can be a great listener. And you know what else you can be when you do that? A great learner. That means that you learn a whole lot of things if you remember those things to do with your body. Now, we are definitely going to talk a lot about what a whole body listener looks like. So don't feel like you have to remember, remember it all right now. We will practice it. And you know what else we're going to do? I'm going to send you a little video with, a, with a, um, a man that we like to watch a lot at school, and his name is Mr. Jack Hartman. He has a lot of really fun songs, and through songs, it might help you to learn how to be a whole body listener. We're going to sing that song, some songs at school, so you may as well get started now, right? Okay, so this is our whole body listener song. The, this is the poster that we'll talk a lot about that has all the different expectations or rules. And then you'll get to listen to a story about, or listen, sing a song with Mr. Jack Hartman about whole body listening. Okay, so this is something we're going to do all the time at school, but I wanted to give you a little bit to look at while you're at home since we're not at school this week or not, not only maybe one day at school this week. All right, well, I hope you had fun. I sure cannot wait to have you in our classroom and to be able to get to know you and have some fun times together. So until then, I'll see you later. Have a great afternoon or a great day. Bye-bye.